It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? You just wanted to get this out of the way. I did. That's, that's exactly how that started. I was like debating, asking you to just like be like, yo, let's just like watch a movie and just like record us watching a movie. Just like a happy one. <laughs> what like, movie would you pick for that? Something with Paul Rudd, probably. I love Paul Rudd. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's such a good guy. My cousin has uh, like bumped into him at least four times. Why? Where? In the city. He lives here? I don't know if he lives here anymore, but she said previously. Lure him into Tiffany somehow. I want to meet I feel, him. I, feel like I want he, him bad. I feel like he wouldn't buy anything. He would just be like, nice mm. stuff. You guys have any t-shirts? Yeah. Is there <laughs> plain t-shirts? <laughs> That's what Paul Rudd would do. I met the one of the Jonas Brothers like five times at like the mall where I used to work. And I feel like at the last time he thought I was like a stalker. because every A stalker or a stalker? Like a st- stalker. A stalker, okay. I think I'm like a stock, like a stock boy or something. No, no, because every time I saw him, like I, I, like I, I like literally bumped into him, like shoulder to shoulder, and we'd be like, "Oh, sorry," but he's probably like, "This guy just loves touching me." Did every, you do it accidentally? Like, why every you, why you keep bumping into him? Like every corner I bumped into him, it was just he was stop like, lurking around corners. I guess I'm just a powerful corner walker. It's a weird thing to be. I'm always prepared to get collided in a corner. You do you remember ever, that last time we were walking and that bike almost hit me? I was prepared for that. Do you like? Are you an immovable force? I I say I say I'm an immovable force. I'm not sure. Like I always wonder if I'm caught off guard. If I would just like go down like a little bitch. No, it has been plenty of times where I've just stood like a statue. I feel like a statue. I felt like a statue. I'm a, I'm a defeated. I'm a defeated man. We're gonna try to keep this episode. Uh, it's gonna be happy. We're gonna try to keep this lighthearted. You guys have have basically witnessed to a to a very less degree my demise over the last month or so it's been rough it's been i've cried more in the last 21 <laughs> days than i have in the last 21 years you caught life. up like i caught up to you yeah like I, I i had a really big it was like the miami dolphins new england patriots fucking switcheroo in the last yeah. in the last six months and that yeah our cry count has really caught up i think i'm definitely still in the lead but you are there i really don't know actually after the last like month like you, you like you've cried way more than me but like not in a significant number overall like yeah. raw, you know, maybe it's like Heather. You cry like once a week or some shit, but no, I, she, she literally sometimes turns to me and just be like, mm, you haven't cried in a while. And I'm like, like, do you just want to make me sad? <laughs> well, th- this month has made me realize that like, <laughs> like I need to cry like all the time. Well, I t- so, you know, I haven't ever cried for a movie in my life at this point. Now it's about pride. and I don't want to cry for a movie, even though it makes me sad. And there's been times where I almost cried and we just watch that new movie, our friend. It's about um. It's with um, Jason Segal, uh, Casey Affleck, and the girl from Fifty Shades. And the whole time, Heather's fucking it's hysterical, like looking like she has a seizure over there, like crying like that. <laughs> and I was holding my tears so much, I gave myself a migraine. Like my head hurt <laughs> so bad. I can't believe you didn't cry during John Q. I didn't. I feel like you are John Q. You remember when we told people I was a kid in John Q? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. I feel like that, like, like it, it, that's like a personal fucking movie for you. It is. The fact that it, that didn't get the tears rolling lets me know you're just inhumane. I know that, pe- like, I, one of our designers died today, Elsa Peretti. She was, like, pretty famous designer. Never heard of her. Yeah. Rest in peace. And she died, and, like, they came and like, oh. Rest in pickles. <laughs> Sorry. God. And, like, exa- exactly what you just did there. They're like, Elsa Peretti died. I'm like. Like, can I finish my yogurt? Like, do I have to do <laughs> Rest something? Pepperoni. Yeah, guy, I was like, yeah. do I have to do anything about this? I thought she was already dead. And then they're like, you're so insensitive. I'm like, she lived till 80. She had a great life. Yeah. And she knew nothing about me. And I just sold her jewelry. <laughs> you don't so think like, she cared about you? Oh, like you personally met her though? No, I thought she was dead this just, whole time. Oh, oh, like you mean like you sold the jewelry that she designed? Yeah. I thought you said when you said I sold her jewelry, like she came in and you sold it to her. I was like, oh, that's a different story. That would be sick, but I still wouldn't Oh, well, that'd be sick. It'd be like sicker, like it'd be like a mental sick. If the the fact that she just got so pumped about that, what? Imagine selling something that they she made and I sold it to her. She yeah. she wouldn't need it to buy it. That's facts. It'd so be, it would be, be a good salesman. Yeah. It'd be sick. Like I just sold you your house. You already paid for it. I've seen you too many times this week. That's when you know something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm around, when you, I'm around people, often that 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 lets me know something's wrong in my life. Like I feel like I've seen you way too much in the last. Like I feel like you don't live in a city anymore. Well, like you I were just, here last night, and then you were at my house last weekend. Yeah, and one, then I was here with Why yelling? That last was was it Thursday? Friday or Saturday? You had people that was over. Saturday. You had yeah, so six days ago. I was 
that that like low key thinking about was like the saddest one of the, like top three not like actually saddest I've been but like overall objectively looking saddest moments like of my life probably yeah like, you and me sitting on the subway like my mask covered but just like tears going down my fucking cheeks there <laughs> like if I saw me I'd be like yo this kid is the most broken kid I've ever you seen know in what my life the worst part was because I was looking through the window because I had nothing to say to you I, this was the first time in my I think our friendship where there was no nothing i knew i could say to make it feel better and i literally did the old like man thing like the tap on the leg was like it like made me feel better to be honest not re- not like yeah. really like nothing could have made me feel better but like that wasn't probably the best thing you could have done yeah the and then i looked and then i looked at your reflection through the window of the train and i just saw you just go like this and i was like i shouldn't have took an aisle seat you just shouldn't have come. Like we, sh- I feel like you needed to be with people. I did, and but it just I wasn't, had no other choice. It just wasn't the environment you needed. Yeah, the yeah the environment was fine. I just like I had no other choice but to fucking do that. Like it was that or nothing. Hey man, it happens. You just need when you're at that point, you just need to be with at least somebody, so you're just not crying like by yourself. That's just gonna make it worse. Yeah, it's, it's just got like some shit has got overwhelming to the point where I've just talked about it so many times that it's just like, oh my god, like draining. This has become who I am for the last month. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's, it's like, big, big cloud uh, this month. But I feel like last week we were going to the rooftop. The sun's coming out. This week coming in is is nice. Personally, I'm on a high just because. I'm happy for my you. scooter is charging. It's working. So I took it all apart, right? My dumbass should have tried to charge it. Heather said she tried. She didn't plug it in all the way. <laughs> so I like emailed the company. I took it apart, took pictures for them. Charge not working. Have you tried plugging it in, sir? No. And no, I love no. that. Yeah, and then we got her car back after the car crash. I get, I, I did, and uh, this I haven't taken a good shower in six months. I was telling you that. A and, good sh- oh yeah. And my shower is going hot and cold for. Six months. I thought we were about to have like a legit argument right now, like who the last person to take a shower was. Cause I was like, six days like might be real for me right now. That's you don't like. There's no musk. That I smell terrible. Do you? I don't. I don't. Maybe because I don't. I probably my yeah. nose. Like I probably smell bad. I look bad. Like every nothing's good about me right now. You need a nice shower and just a nice <laughs> cleanse. Maybe like a nice juice cleanse tomorrow. No drinking. Just go to Central Park and just. No, I'm, no, I got plans tomorrow. What are you doing? I'm not talking about it on the air. Go next thing uh, st- speaking of scooters i could segue for us right here um the it's not a segue when you just cancel me and then just start i just didn't really want to talk about it on air to be honest right. we can talk about it after the monkey knife fight rep that i work closely with the previous this last year 2020 is like if you hit this number or whatever this goal i'm gonna buy you an electric sco- a scooter like i'm gonna buy you something nice to fucking skirt around the city with and i was like sick and we hit the number that we needed and he's been telling me um it's like I've been looking into ones. I want to make sure I get you like a good one or whatever. But this has been like a little while going on now. Yeah. So it's pushing into that range where it's like, you know, I'm not going to ask him about it or nothing. You know, like so it'd be weird because I didn't like I don't like deserve it really to begin with. But he's brought it up a few times. Now, you know, we're in a little scooter bit of scooter season. We're, oh. I mean, scooter season. But I was going to talk about we're in a little bit of a, like a negotiation. We got a couple proposals where this fuck, couple, couple, couple companies want to fucking lock the big dogs down for the year. Yeah. So now it's like you know if I if uh, because when you're in the fantasy space, I mean, listen, like all these you're free agent every year. All these platforms are uh, are like their own. You know, you can either do season long, you can do DFS, and once you sign with one, it's like you're putting yourself out of the market for the other ones. So my conundrum is like. Do I wait to sign it? If I go with somebody else, do I wait till that scooter hits my fucking front door before I break the news? I'm not getting the scooter if I tell him I'm signing elsewhere, you know? No, I feel you still should because he, that was a pre- I get Virtual that. handshake and yeah. he should be a man of his word. Should and if he's not, then fuck that, fuck it. I just still want, like, it's not about character. I just want the fucking scooter at this point. Honestly, you should just go on GoTracks.com and just pick a scooter and be like, this one's awesome. Yeah, just like send it? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Fuck. Don't go to uh like you you need a high speed one. Yeah. So. I want something that will fuck people. Why don't you up. Just get an e-bike? I debated that when I first was look when I first got the like my bicycle I was looking at e- e-bikes are pretty expensive. They're like 700 800 bucks you can find. Yeah, I just like I enjoy like riding a bike around, you know? Like that that if you're getting an e- e-bike is like for business. It's like yeah. bit, you know, like I'm going from point A to point B. I'm like I'm I'm fucking going from point A to Z with no, you know, with 17 stops in between. I just like like the feeling. We're going to be it. big scooter gang, you me and Heather and her pink scooter. He's fucking sick. I'm, We're going to need people to like set up and vote fucking video grow video graph us i'm down i don't even know what that means but i'm down i've just meant like videotape i'm not sure i was gonna say like photograph and then video came out and i didn't know how to end the word 
but like us three going triangle down the street or some shit. Heath leading the way, and then we like kick her from behind. She <laughs> capes. Rolled. We need she capes. Rolled. That'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. But speaking about um, negotiations, you're a free agent. You are getting some nice contracts coming in that you are interested in. Um, where Where's your head at? I'm not sure like how detailed I can go. I don't even know if I can go into the actual names of the companies or whatever. We'll say we have one on the table. We have one hard offer on the table that is a, it's a nice hefty cash amount that I could take it in cash or take it in equity. Or I could do a split of, you know, say half of it, half of this, the, the base of the contract is this. Half of it I could take equity, half of it I could take in split. So that's something I have to sit down with and decide what I want to do. Uh, it's a company that I believe in. I believe in like the product and the team. And um, it's probably a conversation I need to have with them in terms of like what they see for the overall goal of the company, you know, like how big can this be? And like, I'm, I'm sure most of the people that have invested or most of the people that they're working with and the people that are in the company have equity as well. So we're all kind of like working towards the same goal, which is cool. And it feels like uh, much more of a family vibe, you know, not like I like the, I, I really like the dudes I worked with at Monkey Knife Fight, but like, you know, they got bought by Bailey's and it's a monster company now that like, yeah, they, you know, they're, like, they're going to have, and you said like the Bailey's guy is not really like, yeah, like that creator, like, heavy. yeah, they're not thinking about like an individual fucking YouTuber when they're running 17 different hotels and shit like which that, which is granted. Yeah. Um, so they have that on the table, but they've also thrown it. I mean, along with me wanting to work with them and having worked with them in the past and wanting like a more significant partnership with them. You, what realistically this feels like is this, this offer on the table actually feels like it's the first company that's taking us seriously. That's taking B BDGE like really seriously. Like instead of just you're promoting us, we're promoting you too. And it's just, just, just like, just like seeing what we are rather than just being like, Hey, let's get a deal where like every time you get someone to sign up, you get money. This is like, yo, a true partnership where like we value you, you're going to value us and we're going to go above and beyond to show you that like you, we think you're going to push us forward. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 this feels like the culmination of every deal I thought I would have gotten up to this point that I haven't yet. And like, this is it on the table. And like, it's like a personal deal. Like I told you, like they want to have a fucking, a margarita like named after us that's legitimately did i tell you about where it's gonna be yeah you told me i don't it, think you should say it. yeah it, it, well it's a bar in new york city yeah. that they're gonna have like a special margarita for it i'm like i'm not really sure the the, the strings attached with it it's if it's just like just a like, one-time thing or if it's like actually gonna be on their menu because that's pretty dope yeah like th that's like cool shit that you can't that, that's like priceless shit you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah that like shows you how much like the partnership really is there um and and that also ta speaks on how they actually know the person you are. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, they just know, like, you have a margarita t tattoo on your fucking arm, and you love Margs. That's all you do. So they're invested in you. They, they've done a little bit of research, I would say, in a minimum, and they know how to pull pull you in. Yeah. So they did a good job on that. But my question is, even though, like, I, I know, like, the money-wise, what they spoke on, it, it's big. No way you look at it, but it's also, is it big enough? Will, will you have to start doing other things to kind of compensate to get the numbers that you need or how, how would you work around that? Cause then if you get locked up by one, one fantasy company, then you can't really get another one. So how, what revenue are, where are we going with that? Yeah. So what makes it a little bit difficult is like, I haven't actually sat down with all the numbers, which I'm going to have to do probably tomorrow. Um, because on top of like the cash settlement, which will be good for the year, like realistically what they give us for cash would be like, you know, uh, that's, rent for the next year in the studio if not you know on top of that and shit whatever but if you do equity which you would want to. right yeah exactly if i did I, uh, top of my head right now like instinct i'm probably going to do some sort of split like if it's 50 50 or like 30 20 equity or something like that but yeah i mean that begs the question but it does i mean there is still incentives on it like there you know there are still the aspect of getting signups does lead to money in the pocket and some stuff on top of that as well so it's not like we'll be liquid strapped it's just um, we'll probably have to do a little bit of higher volume, but we're going to be promoting the fuck out of it. And they're also, they're going to be, and the other reason I say that they're taking us seriously, like they want to send us to events and shit, you know, they're yeah. like, you guys want to go to the combine. You guys want to go to the draft. We, you guys want to do live events, rep us there. We'll fucking pay for you to go and like, go do your thing that you normally do. And I'm like, fucking like, that's cool as shit. Like that's it. That's what you need. You yeah, need exactly. Someone to just believe in you. So I think like, like you said, that's like, wait, it gives us credit. It gotta, gives us credibility behind yeah. what we're doing and shit. Like, you know, getting some sort of like media recognition and the guys that are behind the company are like big time fucking players in the space. You know what I'm saying? Like big time players, the investors that they have behind them are big fucking names in the investor space. So I'm like, you know, 
it, obviously they have a lot less to lose, you know, when huge fucking names throw out X number of dollars, like, oh, if the investment goes bad, it goes bad. But like, it's also the fact that they believe in it. So them, them having someone like that believe in them and them believing in us is like, you know, like the math adds up there. So it's, it's just something I'm like personally really excited about. So yeah, they, they uh, put the offer on the table. And then I, I guess money wise, you know, the, the deal with monkey knife fight was getting people to sign up for the draft guide. So it, it basically, uh, el it eliminated the revenue that we'd get straight from customers, basically, right? Like we didn't get any money from customers. So this, this is getting money from the company for getting people to sign up, but we also get money, like the draft guide is not taken out of the equation. Mm -hmm. So it might be a little bit less than what we made last year, but the content is much easier for me to make around their product from now until the end of the season. Okay. So this is a season long contract. Is a straight year, yeah. Whenever we sign it, it's going to be for the entire year, and um, and that's what was a little bit difficult for Monkey Knife Fight because their product, we don't do basketball content, we don't do baseball content. So, and the deal we had was like the people had to play a game in order for that user to register as someone that we got to sign up and get paid for. So that couldn't even start until the beginning of September because they didn't have preseason game, they didn't have shit like that. Right now, we I can get people to sign up for this platform and use it starting fucking tomorrow. So like the, you know. Uh, while the money overall might be a little bit lower on like a pound for pound basis, like I think we could easily hit the same numbers we did with this company, if not more, because we have so much more time and it's so much more integrated to what we do. And that's great. And I think that's a good opportunity to have just because you, like, I think we said it previously, you're always looking for your next meal and this would just lock you up something you don't need to worry about. And then you can focus on other things as well and enhance the fantasy football aspect of it too. You know what I'm thinking actually too, which might be a good idea to incentivize the team. I might see if they could split that. If, if I go like 30, 20 equity and give people on the team, like a little piece of that, you know, I'm not sure what the overall percentage would be if from the company, but like, even if, if we took the deal, it's like 30, 30 equity, 20 cash, the cash will obviously go straight to the business. But if I split up the 30 equity and put like, you know, you like you get a sixth of it, you get a sixth of it, you get a sixth of it. Like it's not, you know, in the overall scheme of things, it's not like a huge hit to like me personally, but like it would, you know, we would, uh, we would go much harder at the partnership, I think every, sure. for and everybody think, involved. Yeah. I think that's just logistics. If they would like entertain that idea, I mean, yeah. it'd be your equity. So I, I guess they would just be like, I don't give a fuck what you do with it, but I guess it just depends what they want. Well, yeah, they would have to. Yeah. Because it's set up on like a site. I guess it's, it's there are websites that are set up for like private equity like that, where it's not on like Robin hood or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Cause it's, it's not a publicly owned company. Um, so like my name is, I, I took equity in this company already. So my name is in that system and they have, you know, my shares of it or whatever sitting there. So I think it would actually, I'd have to ask their team be like, can, can I split this up between, you know, this number, the, the, these many people, like, do, can you legally put it under there? Cause otherwise, I don't know. It feels stupid if I was just like, yeah, I'm going to take your shares, but like you have them there, you know, I'd rather just like give it away. So I don't have to like kind of worry about that later down the line. Yeah. It makes sense. I think that's a good, good opportunity. It's exciting though. Like when you told me the whole contract, it, it just made sense. Like it, they, like you said, they just believe in you and they believe in the vision and this just helps the vision. How does that, does this affect any way of like that your app launching or anything or? No, it wouldn't affect our app launching at all. Uh, we're still like, we're really far off on the app. I think we're still working on like the website side oh, of things. Really? Yeah. So once we, I think once we get that, it's probably easily transferable over to the app, but the whole like, and I guess, I guess my plan really wasn't to launch like anything lifestyle wise in the app until like July, probably. So oh, we still okay. have some time. Um, but yeah, you know what it is with the, with the website? We're like, we're like actually getting pretty close now. The thing is I'm so used to, like, I see the website. I'm like, this is not designed exactly how I want it. And I'm used to going in there with my fucking hands and, and getting dirty and being and fucking around and be like, oh, I kind of like this. I kind of like this. But the way it's set up, it's like, I can't really do that. I can only try to communicate the way I see it and then have it come back to me. And I'm like, ah, no, like I just, I just got to fuck around with it for like a couple hours, see what I don't like, see what I do like. And then be like, oh, like this is where we can go from. But I don't really have that ability to do it right now. So working on a lot of, most of the back end shit is done. A lot of the content's already up there, but we're working on like the design of it, which has been our diff most difficult part. Because to be honest with you, the web, the web guy I'm working with is, he's not like a, not a design guy at all. Any, any chance you could bring someone in for that or? I probably can. It's just like, we're so deep into it now. I feel like that it's like, we're so, we're so close to being it done that it's it, I don't want to say we're like settling because we could always improve it afterwards. Yeah, but like you said, just have I want to launch this shit now. Like I yeah. wanted to get because I haven't been plugging the the draft guide to pre. I, I plugged it like once or twice over the last like month, and we've gotten like a hundred or so pre orders on it already, which is good. But like I'm I'm missing out on like ten videos that I 
could have been doing over the last, you know, whatever to plug it. And I'm like, it's because we're not, the infrastructure is not there for me to start plugging away on it. So realistically, we're like losing a little bit of money, but I, I'd rather do it right than, than rush into it right now. Yeah. I mean, that's like you said, that's going to be your baby. So it's going to be a good thing when it comes out, yeah. no matter if it's not finished or not. So then you could just work on that. But uh, anything else on um, the team? Uh, we talked about the move a little bit. It's coming up. You have to start giving your 60 days soon, right? Or is it 30 days? I think it's 30. This, this place has emailed me like six. They emailed me today again, like yesterday. I'm not really sure what the etiquette is on. Like if, if I'm legitimately up in the air, do I just say that? Like, I'm not sure. Like, is that even worth their fucking time? I I think so. Because I should. There's nothing else I can do, right? Just because you got to tell them something because like my landlord, it's 60 days or I lose my security deposit. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is 30, but yeah, I'll email them back ASAP. Um, yeah, I'm looking at three or four places in the East Village over the next three days. So by the time you guys see this, I've already looked at like one or two spots. And then maybe I'll put the footage over. Or maybe I'll overlay the footage. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it might take up too much time. But yeah, we're looking at a few a few spots um, uh, that I think could be good. We'll see. You know, um, I try not to get too excited because a lot of times, f- fucking New York City, their pictures they just take like widescreen shits where it looks crazy. But the square footage looks good, like fifteen, eighteen hundred in that range. I'm like, that's pretty fucking big. So we'll see. Um, it's definitely getting down to crunch time, but like, just so much shit to worry about that it's hard to like focus on any one thing. Yeah, I mean, with the house too. I think I don't know why. I feel like you're underplaying having a roommate in this thing is like going to be crazy isn't it like you don't think it's going to affect him in some way or because he's not part of the brand well here's Obviously, th- he's a cool dude like i i met him what for five minutes through a facetime and i was sitting behind you i'm like this guy's incredible well, here's the thing like what you what I, and i get where you're coming from but it's you, it's only because when you come here you're fully immersed in bdge and when they come here, they're fully immersed. But you got to understand 90% of the time is just me sitting alone up there by my at my fucking desk. Yeah. It's not really like wild shit happening all the time. Like in reality, would we like it to be popping all the time? Like, yes, but practically it's not, it's, that's not going to be the case, you know? So like every you know, when you guys come for a couple hours a week, I'm, it's not like if TJ has friends and shit, I'm not going to be like, yo, what the fuck? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, re- realistically, it's just because you guys see you're in it when you're here, but most of the time you're not like it's not going on when people aren't here. It'll be funny. Like he's going to have like a candlelight dinner a date on a Friday night. I come in like Tom to film while yelling. Like how you boys doing? Yeah. I mean, the scheduling might be a little bit annoying and that's like something I've really probably taken for granted living by myself. You had no, there's no, just literally no responsibility to anybody else, nothing. which is fantastic. Um, what was funny is when I first started sending him places, I started sending him places that I would want just a completely open room like one big ass open square and he's like yeah but like bro like where are either of us gonna sleep like <laughs> he was like being practiced like if one of us is like has sex like we literally have to leave the apartment or something and i'm like damn like i didn't you're so it. true yeah. yeah like i'm not gonna have sex with fucking anybody but it is what it is it doesn't change now right it is what it be the weather's getting nice stop <laughs> central central park next weekend have you done have you like gone out i feel like you once you get to absorb sun you just become a happier person. It's very true. So, Even like the sun not being like, usually you come when the sun's down and it was like getting there, but like, I've been much happier the last couple of days. Uh, what if I, I feel like I've been kind of out and about the last yeah, couple of you? weeks. I don't remember like what I've been doing, but yeah, I have, I think I've been drinking too much. That's one thing. Really? Maybe, maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. I think it's maybe just a total lack of sleep for the last two weeks. That's like making me think I'm just in a weird state of mind. I mean, like I said yesterday, you're, it's getting a little messy in here. So your mind's a little scrambled. I think, <laughs> I think that's what Snack said too last time he was here. He's like, oh, he's like, you're living. He's like, I just went downstairs. He's like, you're living. I was like, what? He's like, it's messy as fuck. I was like, shit. I feel like you're in a blur and you just need a little cleanse real quick. Something. I also think since we started filming down here though, like it's become more cluttered because we got the lights, we got the camera, we got all this shit. I'm just like, I'm not gonna move that every time you leave. You know. I mean, this is partially your fault. You should pay rent. To be honest. Okay, this is out of control. In what way, shape, or form? Answer the question. Following up. You asked me to do this, and I obliged. No, and you begged. I begged. You're like, I want a spot on the show. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 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 never, I, I never even said I want to get paid. I don't think I've ever asked you to get paid. I just want money. Yeah, you just want... You, you, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to get paid to work. You want to get paid not to work. Yeah, I just want to be like... Buy me a couch. Buy me, but Pay me $50,000 because I woke up and I just wanted it today. Yeah, why not? You dream big, you get big. Work. How's that? You're uh, you're getting an unpaid internship. Whatever. Fuck off. Speaking of uh, this kid, uh, Tony, he's been doing a lot Tony of Tony with uh, a wire eye. 
T-O-N-Y. Tony, uh, he's been doing the best of videos. You know, the ones that we chop up? Yeah, they're good. Yeah, he's been doing those. He's so super into it. was great because he... Uh, you had another guy doing it, right? Or did he just... Robert was doing it. Yeah, this kid Robert was doing it for a while. He stopped towards the end of the year. Yeah, he was just like, it's very time consuming, which I understand because Tony's done such a good job of pulling from every piece of fucking content we do, which I can imagine just takes so fucking long. Yeah. But when I when I wanted to bring someone on for it, like I made sure I was up front. I was like, listen, if you don't already watch the content, this is going to be an unrealistic job. Ridiculous. For you. Exactly. So like I made that up front. And then by the time we got to the end of the year, Robert was like, this takes too, like, it just takes so much time and like whatever and i was like yeah i mean like i told you kind of is he not doing anything for you anymore or just i'm not sure that? what he's doing i feel like he's <laughs> doing some editing for someone somewhere on, on big dogs i'm not I'm, i don't remember to be honest yeah. he's like still in our slack and like it hits me up every once in a while but like i i, I honestly i'm not sure we have yeah. a lot of like random editors going around so tony's been doing the best stuff he actually just moved into the city this weekend and uh he was hitting up snacks or animal and i think he wanted to hit, meet us uh meet up with us on saint patty's day but that obviously went <laughs> fucking awry but tony was like I want to do like all the vlog shit behind the scenes. He's like, I'm, I'm in for like being the, uh, uh, the dude that just follows you guys around all the time. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm like, That's like a job nobody wanted. A hundred percent. Tony, you're in. Yeah. Like, Tony, he, bring the bagels. He's here. He moved to New York City. I'm, I don't know if that was like a thing he wanted to do or he just like, I'm, I'm fucking. Or is he just living in a forced, closet right now? And he's I, just I, like, I think I'm he's not. Nah, he's living with his brother or something. Okay. But, that's cool. Yeah. He wants it in bed. Um, dude, that's cool. amazing. I that's know, a, that, yeah, that's cool. the hunger you need. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We got him and like sexy pats are like really on their grind with the shit. That's amazing. Like, they, they want it bad. They want what about it. that kid that did an anim animation for you? Nick? Yeah. Um, I haven't really asked him to do anything. I think like Animal is asking him to do some stuff. I'm not sure, really sure if he's... You have so many like <laughs> just... Minions. <laughs> like it's so funny. Like it's like you're the kingpin with the cocaine and they just keep chopping it up. Yeah. Keep chopping it up. By the, yeah. By the, <laughs> by the time it gets to the fucking user, it's sugar, yeah. salt or some shit. Whatever they sell these days to these kids. Yeah. Nick, well, Nick is... Uh, Nick did the thumbnails for FTP for a minute. He does some like one-off projects. I, I just like yell at him in the DMs. Be like, Nick, like fucking get this done. Get this fucking done and he'll do it. But I'm not sure what he's I'm not also not sure what he's doing anymore with those. Have you been uh, training for the the combine? Or are you just that confident that you just will outperform snacks and animal? I mean, how confident does one need to be in order to actually do that? I, I don't know. I saw uh, he looked awful yesterday, but seeing him in a picture, he looked a little slimmer. Animal? Yeah. Look back at last year's combine and you're going to be like, Animal looked good. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not that, I mean, he kind of looks like shit now, but I'm sorry, Animal. But he's not, like, if he wasn't beating me last year, he's not beating me this year. That's the way I'll put it. And I've, I've, I'm have i probably in way worse shape now than I was last year, but, like, I, I'm just, yeah. Just, it's just, you know what's it's, funny about Animal? Because prior to BDG, we used to play, like, flag football. Everybody that commuted mm -hmm. or smoked pot would go. We bought flags. He still has my flags, and I want to <laughs> know where they are. But uh, we played flag football, and he was like a Marshawn Lynch. When he when you give him the ball, he would cut and like. But and then I started thinking, he was cutting people that like didn't have knees, <laughs> so they would just be like, and just yeah. fall like. Listen, a <laughs> if you put animal on like a weight adjusted curve or something, mm -hmm. you know, like it works well, like his speed score and shit like that. Dude, like I always say, I'm the most athletic, unathletic athlete. You could flip that whatever way you want and still know how. I think I'm kind of. You're like athletic enough. Yeah, enough to. Just you're athletic enough to be like a a, a a fourth, fifth man. Yeah, you're not like a you're not like an average human being athletic. Like you're above that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I don't know where that came from because in high school I was just so bad. I feel like it came after high school. I was like, I'm not that bad. I should just. No, I think you were. I think I just got picked on and it just hurt me too much emotionally, <laughs> and then I just thought I was just the worst athlete of all time. Yeah, that definitely was the case in high school but i feel like you weren't actually that unathletic you're pretty mean in high school to you let's dig let's dig this hole who's that mean to me oh look at that i don't care we can dig that all day i fuck off. never get tired do you guys know where you're doing Hell this uh, or no i have no idea where the fuck we're doing it we're doing it in two weeks actually maybe three weeks somewhere in new jersey probably oh are you doing it in jersey i guess i mean there's nowhere here to do it you know we need like a field or facility or something somewhere over peck park maybe you ever been oh, there that's in is it? Mm -hmm. You ever been there? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So, like, we think we could probably do it there. That's you, what my Uncle Freddie told me. And he was also, like, like check it out. yeah, I mean, they have everything. But I know Volte Park in Teaneck also has, like, an outdoor workout area that might help. I think we were waiting to go scout it once the weather got nicer. So, this in the upcoming week or two should be pretty nice. I'll, I'll pro They'll probably do it one day or something. An animal will, like, vlog it or whatever. Do you guys about. have anything else Um, doing combine? Anything else, like, content-wise that's coming out soon? Uh, Well, we're going to the Knicks game on Tuesday. Oh, so uh that should be fun. Who are they playing? Next for fucking bike. Uh the Wizards. Oh. Westbrook. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of excited for that. Is he? He's not hurt, is he? Is that no, what, no. Is that what the tickets were 45 bucks? No, no. I just saw him like dunking and fall into the stands. I think he's fine. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's like par for the course for Westbrook. If he doesn't do that, it's not a normal fucking Are you going to wear a Westbrook Thunder jersey? No, I'm going to wear a fucking Knicks shirt. Really? Oh, I, you're you're all in on Knicks the Knicks? Are, I've been a lifelong fan since a couple weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Knicks are fucking back. Knicks are bike. I wonder how that's going to feel going to like, you're going to an event. There hasn't been a it's event feel good. in a in a year. I mean, dude, just going to like a. I've been to like three bars probably within the last like month or two, and it's a fucking electric. Just throw like Calvin Harris on, and I'm like, oh my god, like I forgot what it <laughs> felt like to be like a twenty something year old human. It it has like really ruined social interactions. Like people don't know how to act anymore, or drive. Dude, I'm not sure what things are going to be like when things open back up. Like everyone's going to be super aggressive. You know what I mean? Like you I, know what the problem is? There's going to be a kid that graduated at no. That was in college. Everyone's going to be a huge lightweight. Yeah. yeah. And like a 21-year-old. It's just going to be people Imagine puking trying... and fucking in the oh bathroom all day long. Dude. Probably I... overdoses fucking galore. I hope not. I mean, I hope so. Fuck it. Weed them out. <laughs> Darwinism. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I said cut. Cut. <laughs> cut. I said cut. No, no I'm it's, excited. It's I'm, what, like, I'm getting vaccinated the first one. I think it's like at that point you're like 78% like good and i'm just like that's like but is that what's stopping you from doing anything right now no but i feel like it's just an extra precaution with my family it has been a little bit like steph's pregnant i don't know if i told you that that's fair yeah yeah, yeah. she's pregnant and i'm like oh dude oh, i was I just know that. it's yours uh <laughs> i was just it's just like a concern you know so now having that i'm not like too nervous about it now that's i'm fair. going to st thomas next month pretty excited for that Wait, then, is that just an island yeah I'm you, staying at a Margaritaville. Why is why did uh, Pee Wee move there, <laughs> <laughs> dude? If you're if you're watching, can you hit up George and let him know? Ask George why why Pee Wee moved to St. Kitts. Yeah, I still think it's like a made up place. It's not. I, I've been to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah, you have. You fucking live in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I have population steady sex Steve. with who? My fiance. Never heard of her. It's not going well. No, I'm sorry. I'm focused now. No, you're not. What do you mean? No, I'm not. I'm saying I like I'm not focused. Like oh. I, we're both just taking L's right now. No, I'm like trying to keep a happy mood up right now. Right. I've been relatively happy this episode. I feel like right today. Yeah, you have been. When you texted me, and I said, "What do you want?" I just pictured you looking at that and started crying. <laughs> like I was like, "Oh, that was mean." But no, I was, like, I was like, "When the time are you coming over to fucking?" Yeah, I just wanted to see if you're going to cry or not. Nah, no crying today. I don't think I cried today. I hope not. No, I didn't. It's good today. Do you have anything? Uh, going on this weekend or just straight taking just mushrooms by yourself not with a friend oh nice not this weekend probably next weekend central park you I'm think excited. you're gonna be a good mindset for that i have no idea because you said you wanted a good mind whenever i do it i'm gonna make sure i'm going into it with a good mindset like if this week if this if the, if the trend continues the, the strings of my light are like that's the graph of how things have been if it continues down that rope i will not take them do uh, they go bad me and Wilson had mushrooms in our fridge for like six months when we moved into Brooklyn. I remember when he moved that in, be, I put that, it in the refrigerator for you guys. That being said, we never took them, so I'm not sure. I'm assuming they do go bad. They probably get mold and shit soon. But I think you can probably keep them for a couple weeks. Mm. I'm not sure. You can, simple Google. Someone let us know how long you can store mushrooms for. Uh, yeah, I think I, if I go, if I have a good, relatively good mindset, I've, I've done them a couple times and like they've always been good. Like what happened? The first time was extremely visionary. The first time was like really like the TV type mushroom shit or... You know, like the trees all turned into like little broccolis and shit and like really wild. Do you think you just took a lot? That's why or? I don't know. Um, I, maybe I went into it with the mindset like that was going to happen and I bought into it. But I think we, I think I ate a lot. That time. Yeah, that's it was what like, I think. It was like in yeah. the middle of college and like it was, it was a great fucking day. The second time, I think, uh, I don't think we took a lot. My two friends I did it with like definitely didn't take a lot. And I just kept eating more and more. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to f like find fuck myself. Me. I'm like, fuck me up. No, like I just wanted to trip and like see some weird shit. Um, I kept eating more and more like big ass stems and more and more and like I got high but like it didn't it definitely wasn't like the first time you know I was like yeah. able to like control myself we went to like a pizzeria we were in Uber for like 45 minutes like walking around a random town uh, we went to a 7-Eleven at one point I'm like yo we're like really just like tripping on shrooms in a 7-Eleven like I would never want to do that no I've never done it so I don't know had you told I me would, that beforehand I yeah like I would have been like no way we're doing I want to be like an open field where no one's allowed and no one can come in and ask me questions. I got nervous the first time when we did it because we were coming down from the high and then we went back to our campus and it was like a really nice day and people were like kind of like day raging in, in the middle of like where everyone lived. 
Um, and I was like, it was like kind of weird being around people again. I got super fucking emotional that night. I remember. And the second time I was, I was, I was not like that at all. I do think it probably had something to do with the dosage, but knowing what I've known, well, knowing what I know now, based off the other times I've done it, uh, I think I'd be fine doing it around other people. Just like staying in your group. Like if we, if we got like a fucking big ass area on central park, like got a blanket and picnic and shit going on and just like st- stayed, stayed in your fucking lane. I think it'd be fine. How long do, does it last? A pretty long time. Like eight hours, right? Like something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'd say you're pretty much. But do you feel that you're down for the eight hours? Uh, no, like you're you're in it. Like it's it's not like time is not like a thing that you like worrying about when you're in it. You know. Yeah. You're, you're thinking. Conversation is really good during it normally, uh, but when you get in your, it's cool because you can like flow in and out of different states. You know, like you can get into a good conversation, but also like at any time you could like you you kind of like consciously choose like what way you want to go a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. you're just like oh if i want to go over sit or sit over here and literally just like stare at a fucking rock like the rock will do some shit to you you know what i mean like <laughs> you just choose you choose whoever wants to become your friend the next yeah. thing you look at like is your best friend for the next hour yeah like one of our friends say like you go in for answers and all you get are questions yeah yeah and yeah that's what i mean like i think mushrooms are very romanticized to the mm-hmm. point where it's like you don't actually get anything practical from i think them. if it was for me i wouldn't take like say you were like you need to take one to feel the whole thing i'm like i'm gonna start with half no wouldn't let that happen well i mean so we're just gonna make sandwiches do you have gluten-free bread yeah it's not that fucking hard to get beforehand i got like two weeks don't play fucking games i'm not doing them I Dude, am. that sounded like a big slurp. There was nothing left. That was like a little <laughs> dribble left. I was trying to slurp. I don't even know why I'm drinking coffee right now. I had a big coffee today. Keep your phone one more time. I'm waiting for the Kenny Galladay news to drop. In He's not bed. dropping tonight. Why not? Because you said it wasn't. I said it was. And then it wasn't. You said it wasn't But twice. it might be was again. So three things that you think molded your life. What the fuck, Steve? Let's get in it. Three things I think molded my life. I was thinking about, so I think Barstool showed like an old clip of Dave Pornoy. And, you know, he used to look fucking awful. Yeah. And it's funny how he looks now. And I was thinking like. You're about to compare me to that? No, no. I was uh, thinking I was like, like damn. I was like, right now, it's not like you're fit. You don't look bad. Like, do you think in 10 years you're going to see yourself and just be like, what was I wearing? Well, why did I look like that? I don't think so. I think that like fashion has changed so fast. And I was like thinking like, okay, but you weren't like this the whole time. So. Like, what's shifted? What three things you think have shifted you to get to this point? Are you talking about fashion, though? No, just, like, life. Hmm. Like, I've been thinking about this today, and I'll you put go, mine. Go, like, yeah. I, one thing was, like, my bad decisions. Do I, do I have regret on them? Yeah, but do I actually regret doing them? No, because they taught me, right? And then I have, like... But that's not, like, a specific thing. You just said, like, my... Like, that's everybody, though. No, there's been, like, three bad decisions that have strictly sweet that one time at your graduation party when with the plate I, no <laughs> that, that like literally so uh, relevant that's what i was like i broke a plate a, on my face and it's like literally almost took my eye out that was like also not on my what, what graduation are you talking about i'm talking about your mba graduation at brass monkey what'd you do there i, I got, barely remember that day. i put like heather in a fucking uber she was like blackout drunk oh, and then center yeah and that's that changed. Damn, y'all been dating since then? Yeah. What? So long. I felt like I graduated 22 years ago. Yeah, Holy you, you shit. did. We've been to. I don't remember life without Heather anymore, <laughs> which is like the crazy part. That's funny. Damn. But that completely shifted me in like, I need to stop thinking about myself and drinking isn't the most important thing in my life. That, like that's one decision that definitely shifted me into like, all right, you need to grow up a little bit, man. Like this is not how you should be acting when you're just trying to like, also just have me and Heather weren't even dating, I don't think. At that point, I'm not too sure. I think we... J- actually, we just started dating because it was August. I think we started dating in July. So it was like one month in. And I would just black out all the time still. And I was like... At that point, I was like, I need to grow the fuck up. I had my moments till after that. Mm-hmm. But I think the last like yeah, three... Did. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, we did. And my problem was I would just drink because I had nothing else to do because I just didn't... I wasn't happy. So I think that shifted something in me and then i think another thing that molded me was to stop caring what people think you know and i think that has always impacted me a lot because anything that people brought me down i just like believed it and just kept doing that and i would just like feed off the off on that even like if you would say something to me it would stick with me and i would just like be like yeah he's right like um, i'm always eh. right yeah well, you were mean too, so I think sometimes I just took it more than it should have been. Was I mean to you, actually? I think you were. In high school, it was like more of like, I wanted to be your best friend, and I was just there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
I think that's how I looked at it. And then in co- college, freshman year, I, I would say, like, we didn't even really talk freshman year. I actually, I, I remember that, yeah. And, like, you, I didn't even visit you. I didn't even come see you. And I was like. It's fucked up on your part, bro. You didn't invite me. I don't invite anybody. Yeah. I don't invite you here. and You just come. No, you do invite me now. I think after freshman year, we've been smooth sailing. But it was, I, th- I would say, like, a two, three stints where I thought I was just giving more than you gave. And I think we've had those conversations still. But they were more of, like, like just small instances, you know. But you're also grinding here, so I now I understand. Fucking grinding, bro. Yeah, grinding my you teeth, grinding coffee. And the third one, I'm still trying to decide what molded me. So, um, I would say what molded me up to this point. I th- I think uh, the most vulnerable time for me was when I started working full time. I think I just you just like realize really quickly that you have to prioritize what you want. Like working full time. It takes over your entire life, right? Like school, when you're in school, it's like flexible. You have class, but you can like work around it and you're social with people all the time and shit. So it doesn't feel like you're doing anything institutionalized, you know? Once you start working full time and your entire life and day starts revolving around that, you realize like how important one, your time is, but two, like things that you're enjoying, things that you're passionate about, like you, you have to cut the bullshit like immediately, you know, you have to, cause you're, you know, you're waking up at fucking 7am, then you're at work from eight to six. And then by the time you're done, like if you don't have a good night's sleep, you're tired. Like there goes that day, it's just wiped out completely. So I think when I first started working, I immediately realized that. And I was like, this is not like, I'm not, you know, people are like, Oh, I'm like against the man or I'm not doing this. I'm just like, I'm not like, this is not going to be my life, you know? So I'm gonna figure out a way for this not to be, um, what I'm doing, I'm just not going to be miserable this way, you know? And, and in today's world with so many opportunities, like not, you don't have to be like a millionaire in order to escape that life, right? There's, you can get a job also that doesn't require you to be there, you know, s- seven days a week and shit like that. So I think the prioritization part, like when I started working is, was really important. And a lot of kids probably deal with that nowadays, you know, when you're yeah. 21, 22 coming out of college, cause especially coming from where, where we're coming from, uh, like the middle class, you know, lower class or not lower class, middle class, upper class, like uh, suburban area. And I would say like you, you and I were not probably monetarily like where a lot of our friends were. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of people were kind of just like spoon fed in that area, you know, and like they never had to make decisions up to that point, And they figured like, oh, I've been happy my whole life. When I get out of school, like someone else will figure out how to make me happy. And I'm like, that's just not a thing, you know. So uh, I think where we were raised. Dude, I kind of disagree with that. A little bit. What do you mean? Like, well, I think that's why they take it the hardest because no, they realize yeah, quickly. No, hundred percent. I I agree with that part. I'm saying when people will take care of you or not. Um, one of our old teachers told me, Steve, you got nothing to worry about with your smile and attitude. Someone will give you good opportunities, right? And I did. I I'm, I'm working hard at my job, but without my neighbor, I would have never gotten to Tiffany's. It just like fell on my lap because he's like, oh, I can get you a job, and like. Like, he kind of took care of me in that instance because at that point, I had no idea what I was doing. Sure. Like, I'm totally confident I'm, I'd be like, no, I, no. But he was not the person that took care of you, like, growing up. I mean, like, people relied on their families. Like, they, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they were, like, spoon-fed like, yeah. in, in that yeah. sense, you know? So they didn't have any sort of uh, underlying, like, motivation to do anything because up mm-hmm. to that point, they didn't have to do anything, you know? Um, so I think, like, seeing it from that angle is, is easy to kind of separate the two so i'd say like the job where we come from for sure and then um there's just there was no adversity there you know what i'm saying oh, yeah, so it's sure. like if there's no adversity there's nothing gonna push you and as soon as you go outside the box as soon as you start thinking differently it's like very ostracized so um that and then i mean like i've, I've been on record about this before like the, the breakup i had you know mm-hmm. like that's i fucking cried on youtube about it i think that just put a lot of things in perspective for me about being more open and being more vulnerable just as a person um and i think it's just uh really important and i've been working on that every day since that shit happened you know no i would definitely say uh, up until that there you no emotions were ever had i just wanted to be like a perfect version of myself for everybody you know but i think you also like this might be like subconsciously because like you know like you didn't have a dad and then like being strong for your mom and sister and essentially because in high school too with your mom like you know she she had breast cancer and that was tough you cried once and you cried because you were drunk at in camping and like and you were doing it alone we just like found you you know like and you always try to like i guess it was like a guard a little bit because like you're like if i do this like it's like 
weak. And I know that sounds like, oh, you, know you got to be the like man, had, you know? In my head, I guess I had like a uh, a perfect vision, like me, me being perfect. And yeah. it's like I couldn't let people in because then you see the imperfections. And when you're older, when you're this old, you're just like, that's the dumbest fucking shit, you know? But when you're young, it's like you're very impressionable. It's like, you you know, you, you think you need to be that. But like, mm-hmm. that you know, what, what you aren't is what actually makes you. So. Yeah. But it's interesting to see too, like, Money for you has never been like a, a big factor in anything. Like for me, I feel like up until now, money was always number one in my mind. I think that's why a lot of things have failed for me because I thought, oh, I shouldn't do this because the money's not there right now, like job wise or keep grinding. Cause like that's, and I no fault to my dad. And like he was just like, oh, if you're losing me, you're making this much now. But I like actually recently he said that to me and I'm like, well, I'm happy now. So <laughs> what? He was probably but, so pissed. Oh, he looked at me. He was just like, I was like, yeah, I would be miserable just like you. <laughs> Look at you and your boxers sitting there telling me. You tight ass white. Yeah. yeah some like, shit stains coming yeah. out the back. But it was just like, at that point, I felt so happy to say that to him because I was like, no, yeah, I am happy. It's like 25 years in the making. Yeah. Just that one like, fucking phrase. Just that one line, yeah. I smacked him with it and I've never looked back since. I don't know if I've talked to him since, actually. <laughs> but, like this one. Yeah. yeah. But it came to the terms like, money's not going to make me happy. I'm Obviously, money buys me things that make me happy in a moment but right now it's not the most important thing i think like i'm working full time sometimes it's draining like i'm here today i'm gonna i already missed like three trains i didn't get home till like 10 30 last night and just had to do it all over again and it just sucks but it's like yeah what I, else I, I appreciate that by the way the flexibility for real nah, it's fine man it's like what else i'm going to do you know and i tell heather that too like i it's funny yesterday i was off but it was busier than work i had a, we woke up had the plumber there i had to go do like laundry and stuff and then I had to cook dinner before I left because Heather's been like busting. Well, her. that's why I was asking. Yeah, that's why I was asking yeah. you like, uh, what time? Like, are you sure you can come at late? Because I remember you told me like Heather was like, you're cooking for tonight. Did you yeah. just cook it and then leave? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I used to do that too um, because we're gonna go back to the old schedule and it's like from ten to nine thirty. So I'm gonna have to figure out like there's two shifts. So I'm gonna have to figure. Oh, you're gonna start working till nine thirty now? I think so. Damn. But in the other hand. Some days I'll get out at five or some days I'll, I'll like won't go into work till one. So there's a, actually going to be even more flexibility during the okay. day. So it's not a, it's, this is not an issue. But um, I felt bad. Like I, I was busting her balls all week. Like I was like, oh, you're doing your home all day. What do you mean? I got to cook, you know, and then it's like but I've been getting lazy, too, just because I've been doing this podcast because I've been using like my I would come in here, spend six hours, go home and just chill. And I've been pretty fucking lazy out at, at home because then the next day off, I'm like, this is my day off. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been like, my my duties are to sweep, mop, and cook dinner when I can. And she literally does everything else and I've just been a piece of shit for the last <laughs> like three weeks. Like leaving like my clothes everywhere and I'm just well, like. Well, like this, this is, I mean in a sense like this has become a responsibility to you. Yeah. You know? Like it's just not to Heather. So it's like. Yeah. It's, no, it, th- and she does enjoy it. I don't, I think she, but it's also like, Steve, if you can put the work in, also put the work in here. I'm like, yeah. you're, and I haven't said this there, so she's going to be like, oh, you are listening once she listens to this. Mm-hmm. But I know. I'm like, yeah, I've been pretty fucking lazy. So I like clean my room like because I have like her oh. office. Like I clean What's that. What's bed you got, queen? Yeah, we need a king. All right. I've been like, I literally elbowed her in the face. <laughs> like she does not enjoy it. But yeah, you, I. it just sucks. But you got to make the most of the day that you have. I really want that eight hours of sleep, but. I'm just like done with sleep. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I think you fell asleep right there. <laughs> I think I might. <laughs> I wanted it so bad. So bad. I was I wanted it so bad. I started talking shit about it and hoped it worked. Yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. Just gonna be, keep it light, keep it tight, keep it right. I like that. Did I say? Was that three things? It was good. I blacked out. I'm not sure if you said two things twice. One thing. Light, twice. right, tight. Light, right, tight. Say it five times in a row. That's the word. Light, right, tight. Light, right, tight. Light, right, tight. Hit the thumbs up, motherfucking button. We out. Skirt. Skirt. Not again. That's how you know. We Not again. Roll. It's so funny because you have that there and we're never going to use it because it's too far. Yeah, that's what, well, the first time it was just like my toes were just like whatever I can hit. And I, you know, it's fucked up. Like one day I recorded like six sounds to put on and I plugged the card into the computer and I didn't know how to like transfer it over. Like I think you have to do them right here, like actually make the sound so that it like stores onto the box.
rather than going through the cards and like uploading. So I had like seven different ones I was going to put on. No, I just don't feel like doing it. That was a riveting story. That's what you're here for. That's what they pay me for. I fucking hate, hate this mic. Oh. You thank snacks for that. <clears throat> Sound like you just ate like a Big Mac. Prove it. Prove that I didn't. Just fucking start the show. <laughs> <laughs>